That's unit four, by the way. Unit four, I know we've talked about this over and over and over, and tonight we're going to talk about it some more because it's still in the news. In the wake of the March 11, 2011 earthquake and tsunami, although an explosion did occur at the Unit 4 reactor site, the reactor had already been shut down with all of its fuel previously transported and stored in an upper floor spent fuel pool in preparation for periodic inspections. As such, the spent fuel was relatively undamaged by the explosion. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just think funny things. <laughs> Unit 4 was officially decommissioned in April 2012 and fuel removal was begun in November 2013 and is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2014 or shortly thereafter. As of June 2014, about 70% of the spent fuel has already been transported to the Fukushima Daiichi Safe Storage Common Pool. Three of the technical experts working on site spoke about their challenges and successes to date. なかった全面マスクでの作業、それによる危機操作とか確認、そういったものが大変困難になっておりまして、でままたその上燃料を移動しましてキャスクに装填するたびに水中が濁るということがありました。でその水中の濁りというのはまあ全く見えなくなるという状況もありましたので、まあそういった時には大気というような形で濁りがなくなるまで増すということもありました。東京電力さんの方が水中ポンプを導入したらどうかということで、えー、検討していただきましてで水中ポンプ東京電力さん自ら、えー、操作していただいて、えー、それを使用することによって濁りというのはだいぶ改善されてきまして、えー、作業の方の、えー、作業をやる上での親密性というのはだいぶ向上しました。This extensive project requiring the removal and transport of over 1,500 fuel assemblies has presented both engineering and personnel management challenges. かじりの兆候が目視で判断できるよう水中カメラで確認しながら作業を実施しております、えー、長年福島第一で当該作業に従事した作業員と、えー、多サイトで、えー、経験のある作業員との、えー、混成チームとなりました、えー、これまで、えー、培ったノウハウ等でですね、えー、良いチームワークを作って、えー、作業を進めることができております新人作業者への教育という点が挙げられると思いますえー、これまで、えー、当該作業員に従事することなのなかった作業員にもですね、えー、十分に、えー、時間をかけて、えー、教育を施しまして、えー、現在は、えー、作業員の技量も上がってですね、えー、結果として、えー、順調に作業を進めることができております、えー、この作業は繰り返し作業ということから、えー、慣れによるヒューバンエラー、えー、ミスの発生が、えー、懸念されます、えー、常に緊張感を保ってですね作業に集中して安全確実な作業が展開できるようにですね作業関係者全員で強いチー,ムワーチームワークを持ってですね予定スケジュール通り作業を完了させるために最善の努力をしていきたいと思います。For all those working on the Fukushima Daiichi Unit 4 fuel removal project, the priorities remain clear. 本作業に限らず福島第一における重要ポイントは人身の安全が最優先です大きな災害やトラブルもなくほぼ計画通り作業が進められていることに対し作業を行っていただいている東京パワーテクノロジーさん並びにウトクさんにまずもって感謝申し上げますこれまでの7ヶ月間繰り返し作業で慣れが生じやすい状況にありましたが集中力を切らさずに作業が進まれたことが一番に思うことでございます実質残り4ヶ月の作業になりますが4号機におきましては爆発の影響で建屋並びに使用済み燃料部に不安を抱かれている現状地域の方々さらには福島県民国民の皆様方に安心いただけるよう
計画通り作業を進めることで早期取り出し完了を目指したいと思っております。And so the building you're looking at, the structure, doesn't have a crane in it, so they can't remove anything out of it. And the structure doesn't touch the other building, and it doesn't support the other building, and that's kind of what drove me to make this video tonight. So the structure you're looking at doesn't touch Unit 4. That's Unit 4 underneath it that you're looking at. Here's what Unit 4 used to look like, spent fuel pool. So Unit 4 is destroyed. Can we all agree, finally please, please agree that Unit 4 is destroyed? So this is CBS. Now in their video they claim they're inside the Unit 4 spent fuel pool. Now the pictures above his head and the picture above my head is Unit 4 and the picture in the top corner is Unit 4. And the picture he's in, he's adamant that he's inside of Unit 4. I mean look at Unit 4. There's the fuel pool. How did they get from there to a beautiful fuel pool? From detonations, from nuclear rods going all over the site. So all of these pictures are the official pictures of Unit 4. So this one, for instance, you see that you can see the roof and you can see the walls and the lights. But here's the building above me. That's inside of that building. Now you can't clean that up. You can't pay anybody enough money to go in there and clean that up. You can't even keep them alive long enough to get it clean. So you can see all the carnage. Two of them pictures are original, but that building is destroyed and the rods are all through the place. And under certain circumstances, they will actually light up and send out neutrons and x-rays and everything else. So that's Unit 4. You're looking at. So this is Unit 4. And the one alongside me is also allegedly Unit 4. So one is beautiful and one is destroyed. Both of them are official pictures. And we can't find any kind of people on this planet that can do that, yet they done it. And they done it with homeless people. And the one above me, alongside of me, these are the ones I inserted. That's the detonations. And that's Unit 4 behind me. And yet, over here, that's Unit 4 according to the BBC. And you can't have it both ways, okay? You can't have two of these inside of each, one inside the other. One's destroyed and the other one's perfect. Now we think that other one might be diny at the diny. Someone mentioned in the comments section last night. And I have a tendency to agree with stuff like that because that makes sense to me. And look at the carnage. Just look at it. There's a spent fuel pole. So we'll go back to that one. You know, can you imagine that beautiful one over here? being inside of the one over my head because that's what that's what all this media is saying so the one behind set set do, uh, Dorner above me from CBS he says he's inside of Unit 4 Unit 4 had a detonation and then it had the carnage now we have uh, informable and they've been carrying a lot of weight they've been carrying a lot of weight and let me bring that up for you now they're saying that look at beautiful unit 4 but look at unit 4 above me look at the spent fuel pool above me and alongside of me in the pool itself and how is that matching up it doesn't see and CBC says they're going to remove the fuel rods look what they're showing them everybody and look at the picture above me that's unit 4 how can you get what CBC is telling you inside of that reactor what's left of that building it had a detonation and so look you gotta challenge these people you gotta hold them accountable well you can't CBC News says so that's the same building and so there's no crane at the top of that right there's no crane in that there's nothing inside of that addition that was done by cranes they dropped it in piece by piece 
You're not going to see no footage of people with wrenches or people with scaffolds or people with cotton torches. So how, if you can't do any of that, how the hell did you get in there and clean it all up? Because you couldn't because it sprayed all over the place. And remember, you know, that tsunami came through that washed radioactive material all over the building. Remember the kind of damage that building is in. So I left off on CBC. They can't tell the difference between a destroyed building and something perfectly intact. Why should they fact check anything when all they do is regurgitate everything they're told to regurgitate, right? RT done the same thing. It says question more up in that top corner. And they got the building over there, and here's the building behind me, what it really looks like. There's a detonation, what happened to it? You tell me, look at the building behind me. Does that look like the other building that's in there is going to fit in the building behind me? You don't have to be a genius to work that one out. You don't have to be very intelligent. You don't even have to have an education. You don't even have to have a brain cell. You don't even have to have a spine. You don't even have to have a degree. You don't have to have your breakfast in the morning. You don't even need to wake up and drink coffee before you look at those two pictures and said, no, shut up, give me my coffee.